All right, hi everybody. Welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude in the USM4A3 by Hobby Box. So I'm gonna get cracking on working on this kit. So the first thing I want to do, however, is I want to, just for my own sanity sake, I'm going to get rid of all of the parts that aren't actually used on the kit. I'm gonna clip them off. I'm gonna put them in a bag. So let me get that stuff out, get it ready, and. Uh, I'll come back. Okay, so uh, we've got the wheels. The first step is assembling the 12 wheels. And uh, in looking at the wheels, you can probably see here, they're kind of uh, molded, kind of crooked. So there's going to be a little bit of sanding going on here. It's like the wheels, instead of being like this, mold was slightly off so it made it kind of kind of weird so I'm gonna have to uh, clean those up before I can glue them together so I might take a little bit of time and do that uh, with one of my sanders here uh, and uh, come back Okay, so I've got the parts all cut for the bogies for one side, and I thought I'd put some together real quick. Uh, there's a little bit of flash that needs to be cleaned up here and there. A little bit of sanding, nothing too serious. One thing to watch for though, these parts here, the volute spring, little assembly there, little piece. Um, there's a shoulder right in here so you got to make sure that this is only on that pin and not on over the shoulder because it won't fit right so i glued those uh first per the instructions let those cure up a little bit um, then something else you want to check is right here and i've already trimmed it off on this one uh, let's see you can't really see it on that one but there was a little bit it's like it was molded crooked on the back here to where this side right here stuck out a little bit further than this side so it won't line up so I just used this plastics pretty soft so I just used my hobby knife and I just trimmed it flat like that on all of them so the other part will fit flush so this part here will fit flush on there like that okay so then uh, let's see we take the wheels and you want to make sure since this is the part that faces out make sure that you have the part that's pre-molded together this one as opposed to the part that inserts because that has got a bit of a gap and I'm sure you're not filling that mess so make sure that is facing out and the wheels fit pretty snugly so you want to make sure you get them pushed all the way onto the axles thusly okay then with the return roller make sure the return roller here has these little holes make sure those are facing out as well so face in that direction like that and then once you get that you can Assemble it together. Just line up all the pins and the holes. Make sure everything's bottomed out snug. And then just take your cement. Like that. I don't the wheels are in there really tight so they're not gonna roll anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dab of cement in there just for extra security and then cement that and then I will use this handy dandy clothespin or clothes peg or whatever people call them nowadays put that together like that and while that is curing up you can install the 
skid. It only goes on one way. There's a, a protrusion there that fits into that slot there. So just get that in place. Like that. Make sure it's lined up. A little cement there. Won't there it whoops voila you have an assembled bogey so all you have to do is just repeat the process for the other sides using the appropriate um, numbers and you are good to go with the bogeys so I'm going to continue building those and come back All right, so the bogies are all finished, and now it is time to start working on the lower hull assembly. So I've got the parts cut off, and uh, I'm do a little bit of cleanup. But one thing to take note of on the um, the bolt strips, it calls for G5, which is this right here and it's it's a pretty delicate little piece on this upper edge and it's kind of crooked so you want to make sure it's like it's real thin on the top so it's a combination of flash and crookedness so you want to make sure you get that sanded pretty as flat as you can and it will be interesting to see how it installs but um, what I usually do, same with the bottom here, it's got a wonky looking little hump. What I usually do is I save these for after I have the two, the upper and the lower hull together, just because um, it seems to be a little easier to get it lined up. Uh, there's not really much flash on the rear of the vehicle or on the uh, lower hull a little bit right there which is easy enough to get rid of and then um, a little bit on the uh, Sponson cover plates Sponson floors whatever you want to call them just make sure it's all cleaned up and in this part here, uh, not much cleanup to do here. It's kind of tricky right along this edge because it curves up. It's like a chamfered edge. So you want to be careful there. And then there's a little bit of flash on this side. Now, this may not be, this may not have the same flash on, on every kit. Um, because I noticed that the two sets of bogey parts that I had um, sprue in uh, not both of them had that weird little high low spot on the top of the front casting they were both a little one was totally smooth the other one had that step that I had to trim down even so just something to watch for it may be there it may not depending on you know depending on your kit so this part glues on here um, fits pretty well as well as it can be expected I suppose so I'm gonna get that cemented on there and then these parts here um, if you do like I do and you cut stuff off the sprue before you uh, install them uh, just make sure that this angle is facing up okay and there's some Projector pin marks, they're going to be on the inside, so it really doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah. So, it doesn't really show how these are supposed to go, so it's just about like that, I'm thinking. So, I'll have to see which way that goes, because it's, uh, it's not very clear. How that is supposed to fit on there so 
I'll have to monkey around with that a little bit. And then don't forget to cut off all these pins on the sides here. Those have to be removed. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that and then come back. All right, quick note before I go further. <clears throat> you know, I was unsure, you know, where this part went. It's actually quite easy if you're not a bonehead like me. On this tab here, there is a little protrusion on the side, a little key, if you will, that fits into that slot right there. So that is where it goes. So you know where it goes fore and aft. Okay, so I'll continue on. All right, um, I've got the uh, sponson floor plates in, and I have glued the final drive covers in place, remembering to cut off the uh, locating pins so you can position them properly. Does those fit together fine? Next is the back, the rear plate, and there are locating tabs here, 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 and here. So you just want to make sure you get both of those um, side locating pins in place and then make sure that these are on top of the floor plate of the hull. Then and just glue them in. Just like that. Make sure it's pressed in place. I always like to uh, do a quick fit here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so that's uh, that's in position. Now again, you know, I'm the type of person who likes to cut this stuff off. Um, And I have done so putting them on the appropriate sides because they're they are left and right so this part here <coughs> the mount for the idler bit of a nub there I need to clean up get that molding seam off the edge of the old knife blade all right then this will go here Thusly. And then this here fits right. Whoops. Fits right. If I can get a grip on it. Oh my word. Not used to working with parts this tiny. Like that. Okay, so that is all in place. Okay. And then um, the exhaust parts here. Fit there, so I'm going to get those cleaned up get these other parts uh, cleaned up and installed and that will pretty much take care of uh, step three so I'll be back all right so I have assembled the drive sprockets I'm not installing those yet um, got the idler mounts in place uh, the idler adjuster 
mechanisms are in place, uh, the mufflers or exhaust is in place, as well as the clevis hooks front and back. Whoops. Uh, the toe pintle and these two inner fender pieces here. So I think with that, that finishes up through step four. And um, other than installing the bogies, which I'm not going to do yet, because I like to uh, paint, and uh, I like to paint first before I install the bogies. So I'm going to end it here at step number four because that is what is complete so far. And I will take up in the next video with step number six. So thanks for joining me here on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the 148 scale Hobby Boss M4 A3 76 wet. So until next time, um, leave any comments, questions, anything below. And I will get back to you as quickly as I can. So, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And I will see you all next time.